Kia ora, year 11 and 12. Here's the Victor's question from the May-June 2012 paper. Now, we did spend quite a bit of time on this in class today. We've probably spent a good five or ten minutes on it near the end. So make sure you can do all of it. It should be starting to feel pretty comfortable now because this one is um, very similar skills to the ones that we've done over and over. So we're given a point with these coordinates and we're given the vector equation of a line. And we have to find the perpendicular distance from the point to the line. That's four marks. And then we have to find the equation of the plane that contains the line and the point. So the key to this one is going to be finding a normal vector to the plane, and that's going to use the stuff we do up here. So as usual, always start by drawing a picture, even if it's a bad one. Here's my line, um, and this has got the vector equation. This, I'm going to write this just as um, one column vector. So it's 1 plus 2 lambda, 3 plus lambda, and negative 4 plus 3 lambda. So that's for any point on the line. This is point P here, and P is negative 1, 4, and 11. What we want to do is to find the um, perpendicular distance from the point to the line. So we're looking for this length here, and we're going to call this point here big X. I think the marking schedule usually calls it A. But I call it X because X marks the spot. There you go, there's my column vector there. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to find um, a vector from P to X. Basically what we're looking for in this question is we're going to find the value of lambda on that line that's going to give me that point. And to do that, we're going to use the dot product because we know that the dot product must be zero when two vectors are perpendicular. Okay, so first we're going to find... Um, vector from P to X. So we'll start by writing down the coordinates of X. We don't know that yet, but it's this. And then we take away our starting point, so minus negative 1, minus 4, minus 11. So that gives me 2 plus 2 lambda, um, negative 1 plus lambda, something's gone funny there, oh that's right, negative 15 plus 3 lambda. Now we know the direction vector of my line is just 2, 1, negative 3, right? and that's given to us very clearly back up here. So L and PX are perpendicular, therefore this is true. So expanding that out, we get 2 times this, plus negative 1, plus lambda, plus 3, times negative 15, plus 3 lambda, equals 0. So let's expand that, 4. Right, collecting up like terms gives me negative 42 plus 14 lambda equals 0. So lambda, I'll go slowly, 14 lambda is equal to 42. Lambda is equal to 3. Now, as I've seen in class lots of times, in the A-level problems, these values are usually nice round numbers. So if you get to here, which is what I did this morning when I tried it, and you get something like 21 over 8, it's worth going back and seeing where have you mucked something up. So it's very easy to drop a coefficient back in here, so well worth checking as you're going. Just try and um, go slowly so that you can go more quickly. Right, so we've got a lambda value, and what can I do with that now? Well, I can get the coordinates of point x, right? Because point x can be found by now subbing in lambda is equal to 3. So let's do that. So x, what have we got? 1 plus 2 lambda, let's see, um, 3 plus lambda, and negative 4 plus 3 lambda. So the coordinates of x, writing that now as a point, are 7, 3 plus 3 is 6, and negative 4 plus 9 is 5. But as Ben pointed out in class today, there's a much faster way to do this, because what I've been asked to find is the perpendicular distance from P to L. So I very stupidly went and found this point, and then I found this point, and I did Pythagoras on the distance. Okay, 
but actually we've got an expression for exactly what we want, which is vector px, and it's this thing here. So the more efficient way to do this question, of course, is just to take our lambda value and sub it in here, and then find the length of this vector. It's the same as doing it using the two points, it's just a little bit faster. So the vector px is equal to 2 plus 2 lambda. I know I've just had this. Where's it gone? Negative 1 plus lambda. And 15, negative 15 plus 3 lambda. So subbing in 3 gives me 2 plus 6 is 8. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And here, negative 15 plus 9 gives me negative 6. So the, the distance between the point and the line is this. So it's going to be 64 plus 4 plus 36, which is the square root of 104, which I think works out to be 10.2 to 3sf. But that's the correct answer anyway. So that's the first part of the problem done. Now let's go back up and have a look at the next bit, which is the bit with the plane. Just get rid of some of the big mess. So again, you can see this is nine marks, but none of the skills are, are too bad. And now I've erased the thing that I want. Let's draw that back in. Here's my line, and here's my point. Right. So we're looking for the equation of the plane that's got this line in it, L, and also this point. But that means that... Um, to find the normal vector, we can think about the plane. If we know three points on that plane, then all of the points on the lines between those points must also be in the plane. So here, P is here and X is here. Now we need to find a normal vector to that plane. The normal vector will be perpendicular to a couple of different vectors. It'll be perpendicular to Px. So if you think of this here as P, and this is line L here, there's Px, and the normal vector has to be perpendicular to that. It also has to be perpendicular to that line. And that means that I can use the cross product to find a vector that is perpendicular to both of those vectors. So there are different ways to do this, but we can use the direction vector of our line and then we can also use the vector px. So let's get that normal vector now. So we'll put down our i, j, and k, and up on top here, plus, minus, plus, to remind me of the signs. Now the first vector I'm going to put in is the direction vector from the line, and the next one is our vector from p to x, so 8, 2, negative 6. You don't have to use those vectors. You can find any three points in that plane, as long as they're not just on the single line, and, and use two of those vectors. Right, but this is probably the easiest way to do it. So now we get i times negative 6 minus 6. So I'm working with this little block here, minus j times this determinant here. So negative 12 minus 24 plus k times the determinant of this little block. So 4 minus 8. That gives me negative 12i. This is negative 36 plus 36j minus 4k. And we can write that as n, the normal vector. That means that the equation of my plane will be this, negative 12x plus 36y minus 4z is equal to some constant, and I'll, I'll just call that c. So what do we have to do now? Well, we need to find any point on the plane, and it's always good to find a point with little numbers. So let's see the easiest one we've got. Well, I think I might use this point here, 1, 3, negative 4, or I could use this one, or I could use my 7, 6, 5 here at x. But let's substitute in this point and see what we get. So it's 1, 3, negative 4 will give me c. So we get negative 12 plus 36y 
so that's plus 108, plus 16 is equal to C. That gives me 112 is equal to C. So we could write our equation of the plane like this, but it would be nicer to get rid of the common factor in here of 4. So dividing everything through by 4 gives me negative 3x plus 9y minus z is equal to 28. Or, even more nicely, multiplying through by negative 1 gives me 3x minus 9y plus z is equal to negative 28. So I think that's the nicest way to write it, um, but that would get a tick, and so would that one there. Thanks for watching. Um, if you're not confident with all of those vector skills by now, please let me know. It's getting to the time when we need to make sure that everyone can do that really easily. Go and watch the two vector revision videos as a good place to start and do all of the um, textbook work on vectors and planes. Thanks for watching.